The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 58. NASDAQ is up 17. S&P is up 2.5. Gold. Gold contract down $1. sixty, trading at 14.40 an ounce. We get silver down 13 cents, $16.42 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 31 cents, $58.36 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 up 2 ticks, 127.13. 30 up 7 at 154.27. And King Dollar. King Dollar up 31 ticks, trading 97.840. The Euro is at 111 to 1 US dollar. The yen is at 108.56. And the pound is out here at 122 to 1 US dollar. And you can expect some nice volatility, folks, as we come up into this 2 o'clock time frame when um, the Fed will come out first with a statement that at 2.30, come out with a news conference. And to bisect and dissect this, let's get over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade Think or Swim, as we do each and every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Don't forget, folks. Every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand the option market, option strategies, futures, outstanding program. You can follow Kevin and his team every trading day. If you haven't test driven yet the Thinkorswim platform, it's an outstanding platform, real easy to do. Come over to our website at TFNN, you hit the banner, bring it up, they'll allow you to trade with paper money each and every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom O'Brien, how we doing? Oh boy. I mean, I think I think we're ready for this to be over, aren't we? I mean, come on, just traders hate days like this because you gotta wait around until two o'clock Eastern, one o'clock Chicago time, and you're just waiting for something to happen. I know, so, and you, you know, know, you know it, it's one of those, yeah. So you're, 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 you're patient, you're trying to be patient and waiting, things are moving around, but no one's really willing to do anything major today unless there's some news. Apple's got, you know, that's got a news event. Yep. Those are the stories. That, that'll drive the morning trade, but we're waiting for, you know, 2.30 two, two, two Eastern time is when Jerome Powell starts talking. The announcement, I think, will be relatively uneventful. Um, I think it'll go quarter point. I think no, no change or a half point will shock the market. I don't think he wants to do that. But then it gets all down, Tom, as you know, to his rhetoric and what he says in the press conference. It is. And, you know, what's going to happen here, folks, you know, like we're all speculating, of course. And like the morning, Kevin, he says, OK, man, so this is going to be different today. Like, it's going to be a big announcement, right? You know what I mean? I'm, 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 we're all doing mental calisthenics in our head before the market's open, right? Right. And, you know, I was looking at the thing that, you know, is different here is that we're at all time highs and we're reducing rates. And... You know, as we were talking about yesterday, the Fed normally doesn't reduce rates once or go up once, okay? So that would right. be very unusual. But at the same context, I can't picture him inside that statement saying that, hey, we're going to go down again. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a green Spanish deal inside here somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Right. I, and, and, you know, for your listeners, I think you should really pay attention to history here because look what the bonds did on the days of the rate hikes over the last two years or so. Yes. And look how bonds have actually rallied of rate hikes. I know. The bond futures. Yeah. So be careful of an announcement, a dovish, you know, a quarter point uh, rate cut, and and bonds bonds could could be tricky here oh, in he, terms of a trade. You're making a great point, man. And and what he's saying specifically is this. So picture this, folks. When we kept going, the, the rates were going up. Bonds were turning around saying, well, I'm going down. I'm going up in price and down in yield. Right. And so, yes, that, and, you know, yesterday when I was, you know, watching them the last couple of days, you know, they went up a few ticks, but the volume is dropping. So it's like, oh, man, hold it. That's not a conviction move. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, these things can get loose. And, yes. you know. I it, think the risk in the 30-year bond once this announcement is made is to the downside, yeah. frankly. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. And, you know, the wild card here is going to be the dollar, you know, and I, I yes. guess when we look at the dollar, you know, it probably has more to do with the euro and the pound. But yep. um, th that dollar, 
is on the table. There's no doubt about it. You know yeah, I, mean? I think the downside risk to, to the dollar is a couple things. Number one is interest rates. And number two is I think if you get some certainty in Brexit yeah. in any way, you know, I'm frankly surprised by the weakness in the euro and the British pound. It, it tells me that Brexit is still uncertain. Yeah. And, and, you know, and there is uncertainty over there. But I think any if they make any headway on Brexit towards something, I, I think that could make their currencies rally in ours weaken. But hasn't shown up yet, frankly. I'm a little surprised. No, it hasn't. And, you know, it, it seems that it's going to be a yes or no. I mean, I. And, you know, you know, politicians in general can reverse course, okay? But Johnson seems to be saying, hey, if you're not going to open the negotiations and tear up the last one, I'm not even going to talk to you. And right. I can see that stance. I mean, that that's that's a decent stance, actually. Do you know what I mean? He's Just got stop. a little President Trump in him, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's why he got elected, frankly. Right. No, I, I, I can see that, you know. And it's like, okay, if you don't go, well, we're going to do it. And, you know, it would seem to me... Like when you're just talking finances and money, someone's going to make the deal with them, even yep. over there, because you have to. I, there's t there's too many big companies that would basically stop. You know, the, the money would right. stop. And that's not going to happen. The money's not going to stop moving around. Right. <laughs> and they're a big trading partner. Remember, when this all started, President Obama said they would go to the back of the queue. Remember that? Yeah. That caused some uncertainty. Well, Trump did not say that. Right. He said, we'll strike a deal with them individually and everything will go on as normal. So I think that relay, you know, that eased some of the fears. But I think there's still uncertainty over there. And I think until you until that starts to dissipate, which it always does, by the way, oh, yeah. eventually, um, I think that I think it's a stronger dollar and a weaker uh British pound and euro. Yeah, and it's a time issue, right? I mean, yep. it, it, what happens, is, is, folks, is that after a certain amount of time, people just get used to it and say, hey, man, just get it over with, man. Let, 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 let's go. Let, let's yeah. move on, man. <laughs> yeah, kind of like the interest rate move today. We're like, all right, let's get ready. And for all you listeners, September 18th is the next Fed meeting. Yeah. So that's and when the next um, – Focus will be coming off this meeting September 18th. And, and you know, I was looking at this this morning. So the Fed Fund futures, we're riding on a 63.5%, you know, cut then, you know. So as you just said, now, if that's already built into the market and built into the bonds, yeah, that, that could pull back the other side because it may be. You know, we just don't know yet. Right. We don't know until this I, comes out. I think, Tom, to sum this up, Jerome Powell has nine bullets. Right, yeah. and, you know, with rates, he's got nine cuts he can do. He's, I think, he, you know, he's pretty much being forced to do one right here. I think the markets have told him that doesn't mean he wants to use any more than that because this economy is still healthy. Well, for sure, right. And the data shows it. Right, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, Apple. You know, uh, bottom line is that you know we, we know that you know, you know, you get the iPhone sales, but the bottom line is that uh, they did get an uptick in those services, man. I mean, a little, right. little lighter than they wanted, but the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, you're is right. That, you I know, mean, some of the numbers. Apple's having a pretty surprising day, Tom. Frankly, that's because some of the numbers were pretty light. Yeah. In terms of the numbers they, that they were looking for. Listen, folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. We're in the most wonderful time of the year. In this particular case, we got earnings, we got window dressing, we get Paul, we get Kevin Hanks, we get TD Ameritrade. It's a beautiful thing. Kevin, we look forward to the program, 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 22. We get the NASDAQ up 16. S&P is up uh, one and a half. Let's go take a look at uh, Beyond Meat. Uh, so Beyond Meat, folks, uh, they're going to basically lay out a secondary tomorrow. You're trading at 199. Your underwriters are keeping it up. Bottom line, it's going to be pushed out tomorrow. And this is, a, this is quite a trip. You know, this thing went public at uh, $25. Uh, only 250,000 shares are going to be sold, but the bottom line is that this is with the lockup period. What the underwriters did um, is released the lockup period from the uh, insiders. Okay, so that's very unusual. It's done, but the bottom line is that uh, uh, that uh, it's supposed to be in there. So that what ends up happening is that initial shareholders get protected because they know that. Uh, guess what? You know, you, you, they can't start laying out shares on the marketplace diluting the original uh, shareholders. Not the original shareholders, the folks that bought an IPO. Bottom line, guess what? They threw, they threw that thing uh, uh, out and uh, bottom line, they're going to let these uh, insiders sell. And you can see how this is sh shaking out. So what will end up happening is that this will get priced after the close today. And, you know, right now you're dealing at 200 and I suspect it's going to get uh, priced somewhere Depending where it closes out today, you can pitch a three or four dollars under this level. That's how that's, that's how the thing normally gets done. But bottom line is that the company is not going to be getting that bread, folks. Uh, you know, if the company is getting the bread, it'd be a different, different ballgame. So this is dilution of shareholders. And uh, needless to say, uh, the underwriter somehow uh, <laughs> uh, basically just said, the heck with those rules. We're going to throw those rules out. We're going to do a, a secondary. We'll let the uh, insiders move some product. And you can see they're moving product in the aspect of, uh, what is it, eight times. Yeah, eight times more than the IPO price. Pretty, pretty amazing. Some of the higher volume, well, here, let's go look at Apple out here. So uh, Apple come out with numbers. Now, where Apple's trading, this was the high volume um, high that I, I suspected was going to get tested. So it's going to be interesting to see whether it can hold this level. Um, because, so the number is 215.31. You know, we hit 221 so far, 218 you're at. That's going to be the number that you want to keep your eye on even at the end of the month, uh, which is today, which is really cool, actually. Because watch this. We put this on a monthly or a weekly. It doesn't matter. On the monthly basis, uh, you need 739 million, and you're not even close to that. 
you're at 4.30. So it doesn't have the juice. If, if in fact, that we uh, close beyond lower than that at the end of uh, trading today, that sets up that you have a consolidation in place, and that would mean that uh, the other side of this consolidation, which is 142, can get hit. Um, the way that, so if, let's go to the S&P for a second. So the way that the markets are set up right now, we're in an ABC structure on the way up. And we've been in this for, you know, bottom line, two or three weeks. Each and every time it's getting up to this uh, level of the uh, 302, you know, it's, it's, it has some resistance. My take is that we are going to get to 303. That being said, and so that's in the SPY. In the futures, that number is 3,055. And we're at 3,014 right now. The highest that we've got so far is 3,029.50. That being said, what I expect after that is a pullback. Now, let me show you why, because it's, it's starting to happen right now. If you go to the DAX in Germany, what happened yesterday is that the DAX in Germany got hit and it had volume behind the move. So watch this. This is pretty cool. So the DAX yesterday, out of nowhere, goes down from 12,400 uh, to 12,115. Volume explodes to the downside. That is normally an indication that, okay, the DAX wants to run back to the 11,620 uh, mark. Okay, so the UK, not as bad. The, the DAX is the number there. The UK, bottom line, you know, pull back slightly. But what we have now is that now the UK today is pulling back, and it looks like it's trying to pull back inside a lower range, which is 7528. Thus far, only at 7582. But it looks to me like that's what's going to happen. Now, if we go over to Asia, what you're going to see, Asia last night, that start, you know, getting some heat on the way down. If we go over and we take a look at the Hang Seng, you're going to see that was down 1.3%. We pull this baby up, and you're going to see that this hasn't been able to get any traction, and then same type of setup, you know, on Monday we came down with a 1.6 billion shares. Last night you came down with 1.3 billion shares. And, you know, we'll see how it's going to handle this uh, gap. There's a gap at 27,584. Um, and we're at 27,777. But that's telling me that um, you have some selling worldwide right now. And it would, it, listen, it would totally make sense that you hit the ABC structure. Um, we get the window dressing going on right now, you get the Fed right now, um, you get earnings right now, you know, so it's going to get really intriguing watching how this is going to lay out, I'd say next week, not this week. The reason being is that we're already on, what day is today? Wednesday. We're already on Wednesday. Um, you get Wednesday, next few days of window dressing, you're going to have the uh, money managers moving around a lot of equities, um, you know, buying some, selling some, all of the above, and then guess what? Then the market's going to say, okay, what are you going to do for me now? That's what the market's going to be, be wanting to do. What is interesting is that, as Kevin and I were just talking, this bond thing is going to be really intriguing. So, so watch this. Let me pull this up for a second because the last couple of days in bonds, the, you had, yesterday we came in with volume. The prior day we didn't, though. See, the, on Monday... You went higher, but we only had 867,000 contracts. So it's like, oh man, if that's the case, then that could pull back, you know, pretty quick. The yesterday, however, what ended up happening is that we did have an expansion of volume with 1.1 million. Now, out here today, we actually have some volume. We have 500,000 uh, already. And at that level, right at 10 minutes of 10, you have a buyer out here, man. Um, you know, that was uh, 50... 4,000 contracts, bang, on a 10-year is, is a big number. So as we approach this 2 o'clock time frame, the bond market's going to tell us quite a bit. And, you know, what it, the bond market's going to be looking for is that, okay, if the bonds turn south and go down in price and up in yield, what that would be saying is that the market would think that there's not going to be as many rate cuts as the market thinks there's going to be right now. Kevin brought a great point up that the bond market was, has been so deviant that even we were going up on price in bonds, up on yield, that the Fed was raising, that the bond market refused to basically go down. So when I, when I look at this, my take is that still we're going to go up on bonds, 
down on yield. And if that's the case, what we're going to actually see here is you're going to get high volatility, number one, but they are going to be cutting more in the future. And if that's not the case, meaning that if they're not going to be cutting more, then the market itself is driving it, meaning that there's so much cash out there that the, that has to be put somewhere. They don't want to put it inside the equity market at this particular point, that they're going to drive it in the bond market. If they drive it in the bond market, guess what? And the, the market itself has really dictated the rate cut that is happening today because it's so lopsided. You know, the Fed kept saying that, no, I'm not going to get down on rates. I'm not going to get down on rates. And the market kept buying, 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 saying, I don't care what you say, I'm going down on rates because I'm going to keep buying. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow. Dow at 24, NASDAQ at 13, S&P's up one. Come right back. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, crude. Crude inventories uh, fell uh, 8.5 million barrels. Uh, EIA came out with uh, API numbers last night. Folks were at uh, 6.5 uh, million. Bottom line is that uh, it's not uh, not moving uh, oil here. So we'll watch this. We bring up this... Uh, 
oil contract, what you're going to see is that uh, bottom line is it, it gets to a higher price yesterday, goes a little higher today. It just doesn't have the juice behind this move. So it's going to be really interesting uh, watching how it handles this uh, $59. Each and every time it's up to the $59, $60 area, it gives it up and gives it up in spades. Let's go to our man John in Philly. Hey, John, what's going on, brother? Good morning, Tom. Um, Tom, I'm calling in this morning to talk the, the silver market and specifically silver miners. Tom, I, um, I just wanted to share with you, frankly, to repeat for myself, and maybe your listeners will be uh, interested in this. Um, Tommy, I've, uh, I've asked you to pull up London-listed Fresneo, yes. uh, which is a silver mining company. It's listed and domiciled in London, or it's listed in London. It's domiciled in Mexico City. And uh, the majority of its mines are in Mexico. And just to let you know, Tom, I have, I have uh, traded this once or twice or three times in the past 10 years. Um, I am not in it recently. Uh, Fresneo happens to be the world's, well, no, maybe not the world's, at least the Western world's largest pure silver mining company. And... Um, I believe they, in past years, have put out something close to 30 million ounces of silver, uh, which kind of compares roughly to the amount of silver ounces uh, wheat and precious metals has on a streaming basis. Uh, but what I wanted to point out to you, you see the price has just plunged despite the silver rally. And... Um, this is a reminder to me, and I share for all of us in, in, uh, interested or investing or trading mining equities, that um, we bear the risk in any of these companies that the mines that they have run out of high-grade ore. Yes. And in the case of Fresneo, it's plunging in price on account of some, some of its mines just getting old and they don't have replacement ore bodies uh, to, to bring up the backside. Right, right. Yeah, this is quite a plunge, man. So I have this up, folks, and when, you, when you're looking at this, if you're watching Tiger TV, this is priced in pence, okay? So the low is 600, which is out at, it was yesterday, uh, today, actually. Uh, the high is uh, 1,048. And that's, you know, John laid it out. The bottom line is that, guess what? You need ore, folks. And, uh, you know, they, they, they had actually, I just pulled this up. They had actually even warned a year ago that they're going to have a problem. Um, you know, so you can see this chart. This chart, even, you know, silver has been going up, and this chart is down from 2056 and 2016. And uh, bottom line, it looks like it's going to blow away uh, 570. I mean, look, you know, yeah, they, they, get, they get problems. You know, bottom line is that, you know, you don't, you don't have uh, the ore, you don't have anything, right? <laughs> you know, that's, that's what it comes down to. Um, yeah, exactly. And uh, <clears throat> as I, uh, uh, I, I'm, I mentioned and share this with you, uh, just to make that point that uh, just because we uh, think and might be correct in the trend of rising metal prices in uh, investing or trading the uh, the miners themselves. That's not the only thing we need to pay attention to. So uh, no, there's no so there you have it. Well, you know, I, uh, in a point in this, watch this, folks. If you go to Kirkland, now this is just the opposite. So Kirkland Gold, okay. Bottom line, you know, low this year, 17, the high 47. When you look at the shot, what you're going to see now, this is a a new mine. And the bottom line is that this has been on a one-way trip because guess what? They just start digging. This stock went from $4.76 in 2016, and now you're at 44 and that's just the opposite. That now you got a new mine. Uh, bottom line is that uh, they got a mine life that's uh, a long period of time. They just, their revenue just went from $258 million to $1.3 billion and expects to go up again next year. You know, so. Say, Tommy, can I uh, ask you a follow-up question on Kirkland, by the way? Yes. Um, just by way of background, Kirkland, of course, is the old Kirkland Lake up in Ontario. Yeah. Uh, that's where the, the, the original mine was. <clears throat> Furthermore, um, the management team at Kirkland, at least back prior to 16, was four former Goldman Sachs people. 
I think the bankers who actually served the company way back when. Uh, these guys, uh, or guys and girls, I, I don't know the management yeah. team, they purchased in Victoria, Australia back in 16 a company that had uh, a uh, uh, up-and-coming ore body turned into a mine. That is what's been driving the output of gold. Um, what I can tell you, I believe they have also taken a stake in something called Novo Resources down in Australia. Okay. Uh, exploring whether or not that ore body has potential. And um, so I'm always looking for what Kirkland Lake management team, what they're going after, because they seem to have a good nose for new mine potential. And so in, uh, having said all that, can you possibly look up Novo Resources for us and tell, Novo, tell us what right? you see N -O -V -O. on that? N-O-V-O. That's um, Novo. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so Novo. That's a 247. Okay, so let's take a look at this. They explore natural resource properties, uh, British Columbia. Okay, so let's do this. Watch this, folks. So what I'm going to do, you hit management, and then what I'm going to look for is cross-management. So let's see, board, cross-boarding. Tom, that, uh, that name, the chairman, president, Quentin Henning, yep. he is a guy that, whose name is very familiar to me. He's, uh, he's a geologist. He's been roaming the globe, and he's been... Uh, you know, looking for ore bodies for 30 years. Uh, yeah. So that's a familiar name to me. It is, and you can see, yeah, the, this this is a, there's a big cross management here. They're they're on. <laughs> you can see this list, man. This list is pretty intense. Now, some of these companies I haven't heard of, but you know, you get Sprout in here. They're 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 on the board of Sprout Asset Management, Sprout Metals, Sprout. Asset management, sprout mining, sprout securities, um, and there's no doubt that these, um, you know, the the guys at Kirkland, they were beside me a lot at these gold shows years ago, and this is before they had taken off. But I could see they were different, and what I mean by different, folks, is that the the pump wasn't there. The numbers were there, though, because I, I, we were actually right beside them. So I used to watch the guy on his computer, man. He was just, you know, they were just. They're numbers guys. So bottom line is it worked. Uh, it worked in, just, in a uh, big way. Serious people doing serious yeah. work, not uh, right. not pumping out the hype, evidently. Yeah, eh? exactly. Exactly. And yeah. I should have bought it, and I didn't. Shame on me. <laughs> Seriously. You know hey, what Tom, I mean? Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. We have the Dow Industrials down two. NASDAQ up two. S&P's off one. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is down three. NASDAQ up five. S&P's flat. Now, uh, the uh, Beyond Meat Impossible Burger deal. Okay, so check this out. Beyond Meat still holding price up here. We're at uh, 200 bucks. Uh, the Impossible, so this just came across from the uh, FDA. Um, the uh, Impossible Burger, uh, so far, uh, it has only been available in restaurants. Uh, could find, well, it looks like it's going to make it into grocery stores. Uh, given rival Beyond Meat, a new competitor inside retail, it also announced uh, this morning that it's going to produce more of the meat-free patties through a new collaboration. So watch how this shakes out, folks. Uh, so uh, in response to a petition sub submitted by Impossible Foods, the Silicon Valley-based maker of uh, you know the burgers, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has amended its rules to call the use of soy um, ligagobin uh, safe as a color additive and imitation beef, clearing the way, clearing a key, key hurdle in the company's push to sell raw product inside grocery stores. The rule change is effective on September 4th, um, though the petitioners still have a chance to file objections. The original petition filed in December of last year uh, said that him, that's, that's, the, that's what they call this uh, soy leucal garland, could not exceed eight tenths of 1% by weight of the final product. Uh, that is gonna get thrown out now. Uh, bottom line is that uh, should no objections be raised, the direct to consumer sale of uncooked red colored ground beef products containing soy will be allowed, the FDA said in a statement. Uh, separately, the company said they're gonna start doing business with OSI Group to expand production. Uh, okay, so this hem is the ingredient that gives the Impossible Burger its essential meat-like flavor, red in hue. It hasn't previously, previously been approved as a safe color additive, meaning retailers couldn't let individual consumers purchase the uncooked product the way they can buy and bring home raw Beyond Meat patties. Uh, that means Impossible Foods has been limited to selling inside restaurants. It often uh, it's often a large restaurant chains such as Red Robin and White Castle, and it has inked the deal to be sold in 7,300 Burger Kings nationwide by the end of the year. Um, bottom line is that, uh, you know, when you take a look at this stuff, folks, man, there's a lot of chemicals in this stuff. So <laughs> I don't, it's, this is the beginning of a, a whole different venture, I would say, uh, inside, of, uh, inside of that baby. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakestad, as we do each and every Wednesday. Can't believe I, I, Wednesdays come so fast. Teddy Cakestad, what's going on, brother? Morning, guys. We've got an FOMC meeting to look forward to today. Oh, boy. I like it. I know, man. So, you know, this doll is hanging tough. I mean, the, the pounds got smoked. That looks like, a, you know, 
We'll see if it comes back. The, the euro didn't jump off the cliff, but let's talk about it. Okay. Well, you're right. The, uh, the pound, for all kinds of reasons, has been falling apart. Uh, we had the new uh, prime minister that was sworn in after we talked last, and it doesn't seem to uh, have phased any type of bullish uh, reaction, that's for sure. Uh, I think the, the, the key component there is that uh, we have the, the Fed meeting is coming out today. We've had the central bank marathon. It started last week with the Bank of England, the ECB, which came out with a very big remark saying that uh, last Thursday that they're waiting on the Fed, U.S. Fed today, Wednesday, to see what they do. Um, and they're ready to pull the trigger and follow suit. So they're kind of trying to force the hand of our uh, Fed to actually do something, which basically will set them in motion. Uh, we will see what happens later on this afternoon. Uh, but you're right, the euro has had pretty much just a knee-jerk reaction. It's been very sideways. And uh, I think what you really have to look at is where is dollar strength and weakness happening? Uh, your lesser majors like Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar, they've been trending lower still since we talked last. Uh, they made newer lows uh, yesterday and today. Uh, but the Australian dollar is starting to look like it wants to bounce today. So okay. Maybe precursor. You know, uh, Teddy, yesterday, uh, let me pull this up. So the Swiss franc, what was going on? I, I, it said that that they were almost thinking of getting an intervention uh, over there. They, they, so did they think that was getting too strong? Uh, I, I think that that might be some of the reasons why they were talking about that. Um, I, think the, I think the intervention more has to do with uh, how the ECB has changed their uh, tone. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But interesting, you bring up the Swiss franc. The Swiss franc chart looks a lot like the Japanese yen chart does right now. Yeah. Especially how they just recently got rejected on new move highs. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, man, there's a, there's there's so many moving parts, man. And I guess, you know, the the dollar. I mean, it it's not over. It's it's high in the continuous contract, but it's just edging right there, man. So it's going to be like, okay, which way do you want to go? And I guess it's going to have to do with which way really the pound and the euro is going, right? It's, right, yeah. right. Well, you know what? Maybe not, though, because uh, FOMC meeting, we know that, let's say, whether they do a quarter point or a half point, half point is probably not going to happen. Quarter point is factored into the marketplace no matter what, sometime in the next three months. Yep. So I don't think we're going to get any big reaction for the currencies initially. Okay. They're going to be looking to see if the ECB starts to do something. Um, now, the BOJ came out yesterday. They don't care what the Fed does today. They don't. Yeah. They, they don't care at all. They made a really staunch um, point that unless there's an economic uh, thing that really hits Japan, they're not doing a thing with their bank whatsoever. You know what's intriguing, man? I mean, I can see the Bank of Japan, like if, if we were at the Bank of Japan, you know, for years, folks, okay, I mean, they've been in negative rates. They probably know more about negative rates than the rest of the central banks, right? It's like, you know, because they've been there, right? Right. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. That's that's it's pretty wild, man. It really, it really is how this whole thing is shaking out. And absolutely. It, yeah. Absolutely. But you look at your lesser majors like your Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar. Okay. I think the dollar index has gotten its lift over, especially the past week. Like since we talked last week, the dollar index has had a nice little rally. Yes. Where did that come from? It didn't come from the euro. You know, the pound right. may have helped to to bring that lift that the dollar yeah. index. But it's really the falling apart of the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar that really led it. Because look at the yen. The yen's basically gone nowhere over that I time. Know. And so if you're watching Tiger TV, folks, I just brought up the Australian dollar. And you can see what Teddy's saying. We just went from 70 down to 68. You know, and that's, it's been a one-way route, right? It's, that's, Absolutely. Yeah. You get, you get, so you get so the, that's, where, that's where our strength is coming from, I think, in yes. the index. Yes, no, and that's important to understand what's inside that index and how that works. There's no doubt about that. Pretty cool, right. man. Well, right. two now, the pound, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, for the pound, uh, it's interesting with the size, sideways movement in the yen and the pound being the one major uh, currency besides the euro. What, what do you think? I think uh, with the new prime minister and stuff like that, do you think that we're gonna he's gonna do anything to help lift this currency, or do you think the trend is going to continue lower? Because I don't see I don't see a bounce in sight, really. Yeah, no, I this pound can go test that. It looks like 118. I mean, that's you know, it's the last time we were down there. What that was 2016, but because this is this is a hard move down, right? You know, right. you know, I mean, it's getting tired. I'd say it's getting tired on the way down, but guess what? That thing is sticking out like a sore thumb. So it's like, why not go visit your old friends from a couple of years ago first, right? You know, right. 
Stay a bear. <laughs> Listen, folks, every trading day, you can check out Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking to you next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Take man. care. Have a next great week. one. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. Right now, you can spend only $495 and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars. So you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of The Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to our man Charlie in Framingham. What's going on, brother? Hey there. How, How you are you? Good, man. Yourself? Doing good. Oh, natural gas, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's take a look at it. UGAZ. So the UGAZ, folks, is the velocity three times long position in the uh, natural gas market. And bottom line is that, you know, it's going to pop out here today. So, Charlie, are you long this right now? I am. Well, good um, for you. And That's... I'm making a ripping. I got in at uh, 1431. That's a beautiful. 1431. Okay, so. You know, natural gas, I mean, has been getting slammed. There's no two ways about that. Um, bottom line, though, this can, you know, what, what it did, it, it jumped off the cliff and came right back inside it. So, you know, I mean, this can go to 20 bucks. You know, you're at 1443, you're up a buck 60. If you, we take a look at the natural gas contract, folks, what you have is this. Now, natural gas, they're going to come up with numbers tomorrow. Uh, what we've done with the natural gas contract is this is that it jumped off the cliff, and what that means specifically is that you had the low out there that was in uh, June 20th, 
Uh, that low was at 211, and bottom line, we went down to 210, and then it reversed. You know, so that's saying that, yeah, you can get a dead cat bounce, you know, so 243. I mean, th those numbers will come out tomorrow, but, you know, this is this has been a one-way move down for a long period of time, so you can, I think you're, I think you're going to be all right here, man. Um, Okay. And, you, right. you know, there's so much natural gas. I wouldn't be hanging on for, for, you know, for a longer period of time. But that top side of that uh, swing points there is game. And in this particular case, you know, that's some real juice behind it, man. Cooking, brother. Okay. Thank have a, you, buddy. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. we got Fast Market coming up next. And we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon, of course. 2 o'clock, you get the Fed statement. 2.30, you get the news conference. Lots of action all day long right here at TFNN. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.